JK boots are one of the world famous Pacific Northwest boot brands that have made a name for themselves by making some of the most durable handmade boots in the entire world for some of the most demanding jobs in the world, like linemen, firefighters, loggers, construction workers. And usually their boots are around that $600 price range, pretty typical for a Pacific Northwest boot brand. So when I heard that they came out with a sub $400 boot called the 300, I was like, that sounds like fit perfectly in the Matusa series. But more importantly, how do they get a Pacific Northwest boot that's still handmade, still hand lasted, down to that sub $400 price range? Well, that's what we're gonna try to figure out. So we're gonna run these through a bunch of tests, cut them in half, and see what JK has done to apparently take the quality of a $600 boot and reduce it down to a $400 boot and where they found that price savings to get it to that point. And thanks to JK for sponsoring this video. So initially I wasn't planning on doing a history of JK boots, but it's such an interesting and cool story that I'm re-recording this segment to put it back in the video because it is really interesting. So JK Boots was started by John Kodzi, the man behind the name JK, John Kodzi JK. He's B Bulgarian by heritage, but was born and raised in southeastern Ukraine. And he learned and practiced tanning leather and some shoemaking in his younger years. And later, after getting out of the military and marrying his wife, Natalie, they moved to Moldova and he apprenticed there for a few years making boots and shoes. So right off the bat, he's already has two different areas of shoe experience. And then in 1994, they immigrated into the United States and eventually made their way to the mecca of the most durable boots in the entire world, the Pacific Northwest, specifically Spokane, Washington. And this is where he took his years of experience in boot making and combined it with the heritage of the logging, firefighting boots that are made in that area. And in 2006, they officially launched JK Boots with his three sons, William, Tim, and Jason. And now their whole family is running JK Boots, including his wife, Natalie, who is also a professional seamstress who runs a little tailor shop out of the corner of the JK Boots factory. And then since 2006, they built their name off of making some of the most durable boots in the world, like I mentioned, like the Super Duty, that's your classic leather chalk full all the way through the sole construction that the Pacific Northwest is known for. They make their O2, OT boot that I have a pair of, that's a, like a lightweight, flexible version of a, a logger boot. They have their forefront boot that's a wedge sole version, and they've, in the more recent years, started coming out with more and more unique leathers, like this really pretty bison leather. And since then, they've really built up this name of quality at that $600 price point, competing against all the best boots in the entire world. So when they came out with this sub $400 boot, that's why I was like, we gotta get this thing cut in half and see what they're doing to get the, down to that price point. Because a really unique thing that JK Boots does is based off of the story of JK Boots, with the years of experience with different types of boots and shoemaking throughout his entire lifetime and different countries, different construction styles, culminating in the Pacific Northwest, gathering all that information to make some of the most durable boots in the entire world. And the story of JK Boots and immigrating to the United States is such an important part of the story of JK Boots because they absolutely love America and everything it stands for and what it's done for their family. And in John's words, he says, words don't express how grateful I am to be here and to have been given the opportunity to build my dream life here. So it is the true American story, you know, and America was built off immigration and immigrants coming to America to build their dream life by making some of the highest quality products in the entire world. Well, it still exists in 2022. And that's why I wanted to go over this history and kind of give you some insight that's going to give context to these boots. So now that you know that, let's start going through the details of this boot. So let's start with the leather first. So all their leather offerings in the 300 series are a chrome tanned leather, and it's from a different tannery than where they get the, the majority of their leather. So I think that's part of where they get some of the price savings but it's still a really thick leather. It's still at 2.5 to 2.8 millimeters thick. So not quite in that three to 3.5 millimeter thickness as they're like super duty boots, but still thicker than even Red Wings and some of these heritage boot brands that claim to have really thick leather. And so we burned this leather to see if there was any plastic on top. And as you can see, it just burnt like natural leather. So no fake plastic coatings. And we put the macroscopic lens on the top coat of the leather to check out the grain. And it looks like this leather has been lightly sanded. You can tell it has a little bit of that matte finish and on this red leather you can see they've put a layer of wax down on top to lay those fibers back down flat and a lot of times they do this to hide some small flaws and inconsistencies in the leather and they keep that full grain leather that's the perfect leather that doesn't need to be sanded they keep that for full grain leather and so that's another way they're able to bring the price of this down is by using a slightly buffed leather but a lot of times these tanneries will sand it too far down and completely remove almost the entirety of that grain pattern at the top of the cross section of the leather that binds all the loose fibers of like a suede together. That's why suede isn't quite as strong as a full grain leather. So we put the macroscopic lens on the cross section to see how much grain was in there. And as you can see, it's just very lightly sanded. There's still tons of grain left in there. So it's, it is a, a still a high quality leather. 
and if I were to grade this leather, I would say it's it's like an A minus to a B plus leather. It's not not quite as nice as their main leathers, but it's still as good as a lot of the leathers on the market. And we also wanted to run the puncture test on it, and it took 59.5 pounds to pierce through the upper, so not bad. But it also it's not lying; it's just a single piece of leather at 2.5 millimeters thick. So that's part of where they're starting to get some of the price savings. And then if we look at the tongue, you can see the tongue is a completely different type of leather. And this leather isn't quite as good as the upper leather because you can see it has a fake print embossed into it with this little pebbling, that tumbled look. I, I believe it's like a polyurethane and pigment finish on top because of how shiny and uh, when it burns it kind of uh, it doesn't act quite like a natural leather. So this tongue leather, I would, it'd probably be in that B range of quality. And one interesting thing they've done is they've cut this tongue really low because on the majority of their regular boots, they keep it fully gusseted. But for this boot, being a more light duty work boot, they wanted to cut it low because they said they wanted it to be easier to put on and take off. So you lose a little bit of that protection from the environments, right? Not by having this fully gusseted in so that the dirt can't build up and slowly work its way to the inside of your boot. But you gain a little bit of comfort by not having so much leather wrapped around your leg and the ease of the ease of putting it on and taking it off. And since this tongue is gusseted so low, we can actually see that the vamp is lined with some more leather. Like the shaft is not lined, it's just the vamp that's lined. And you can see that it, if we look really closely at the cross section that there's no grain in there. So it's a suede leather from the split portion of the hide and it's about 1.5 millimeters thick. So that seems to be on par with their regular boots and even with some of these other Pacific Northwest brands that are selling boots for $600 with a split leather lining. So I don't think they saved any money there. And even the tongue is the same tongue material as their main heavy duty boots. And one really interesting thing that JK does that really nobody else does is on all their boots they use a Technora burn resistant thread. And that's because these guys are predominantly a work centered boot and so the entire boot is stitched with that flame resistant thread. And so we did a couple tests on it to show you how flame resistant it is. And as you can see putting a flame to the actual boot itself didn't burn through the threads like a normal boot would. And we took a string from a regular boot and the Technora thread and lit it on fire. And as you can see the Technora is uh, self extinguishing versus the regular thread just lights up. So they didn't save any money there because they're still using the same Technora thread. And then if we look deeper inside the, the, the boot, you can see that it still has a big slab of vegetable tan leather for the insole. And we don't know how, how thick it is yet, so we'll see we get it cut in half. Maybe they did a little bit thinner to, to save a little bit of money but it's it, the whole thing is a big slab of vegetable tan leather and people really like that because leather slowly compresses the shape of your foot giving you a custom footprint inside of your boot so your boots they fit like a glove it's kind of like a cliche saying but it really it does feel different compared to like a foam based sh uh, boot or shoe it is a really unique feeling so i'm glad they they kept that veg tan insole in there and then if we start looking at the construction of this boot this is where it starts to vary from the main boots that they have because there's three visible layers that we can look at for the sole construction. You have this rubber midsole, you have a little bit of a foam wedge, and then you've got the Christie Vibram outsole. So the rubber midsole is pretty standard. A lot of times in these boots, you'll see another layer of, of leather in the sole construction. So maybe that's where they start to save a little bit of money. So if you look at those layers on the 300 series compared to their main $600 series boots, like this forefront, you can see that it's basically the same setup with the same rubber midsole, but instead of this leather wedge, on the 300 boots they've done a foam wedge so i think that saves them a little bit of money and it has its trade-offs either way because it's not going to compress as much as the leather will and maybe it's not as durable as the leather but it will give you a little bit more squish and it gives you that price savings and if you look at the outsole it's the exact same outsole as their regular wedge sole boots so it seems like there's just a little bit of price savings with the materials but not really a ton it seems like where the a lot of the price savings comes from the outside is in the construction itself because if you look at how they build these 300 boots you can see that welt stitch goes all the way around the boot that sews the upper down through the midsole that attaches it to the outsole where on their regular boots they still have that stitch but it stops near the hill so this would be a 270 stitch down construction whereas the 300 series is a 360 degree stitch down construction and the regular boots they have a double row of stitching at the toe 300s only have a single stitch and then on the regular boots the heels are all nailed in so there's a bunch of nails on the inside you can see one actually right here holding all those layers together whereas this 300 series has that stitch line holding those layers together so i think that's part of where they find some price savings as well 
but does it mean that it's not quite as durable? I don't think it's quite as durable as their main boots, but that doesn't mean that this construction isn't strong because this is a pretty popular construction with Danners and a lot of the other work boots out there. Jim Green does a 360 stitch down construction, but it's still hand lasted, it's still handcrafted, it still goes through the whole process that their regular boots go through. It's just in the finishing and the sewing part is changed to be more efficient and a little bit easier to do so they could bring that price down. So we wanna do a puncture test on this construction to see how many pounds it took to pierce through the outsole all the way to the inside. And it took 259 pounds to pierce through. So it seems like the leather layers that we've been doing these puncture tests on really make a difference on the puncture resistance. Because even though this doesn't have another layer of leather, it just is the outsole and the rubber midsole, it still took 259 pounds to pierce through. So from the outside, looking at this thing, there are some differences and some things that did some price savings, but I don't think it's quite enough to justify the price drop. So it must be on the inside. So let's cut these in half. All right, we got it cut in half, so let's see what's inside. So the biggest thing that stood out to me is that there's still a lot of the same components compared to their $600 uh, forefront boot. You know, they're almost identical on the inside. The only thing that's really different is that foam wedge. You know, on the forefront, it's a leather wedge. Because you still have that really thick 3 8 inch vegetable tan leather counter, whereas most boots in this price range either have a synthetic counter or a leather board counter. I don't even think we've seen a full leather counter at all, let alone a really thick one like this. And they're still using the exact same thickness of insoles. You can see both of these are at that five to 5.5 millimeters thick veg tan. They also still have this little layer of leather on the inside there that I think acts as a light shank and a little bit of a filler material for where this upper is curled underneath the insole. Really the only thing that's different is that wedge. You know, on the forefronts, it has that big leather wedge that acts as a shank, a really heavy duty shank, whereas this just has the foam. So you're not gonna get quite as much support. And if you compare it to the Super Duty, you can see the Super Duty has that Blake stitch at the toe of the boot, whereas the 300s do not. So I believe this insole, this veg tan insole is just glued in. Whereas the regular pairs have the nails in the heel and looks like half of them have the Blake stitch in the toe, half of them don't. So that's probably where part of that price savings comes is in the labor to drive those nails through the hill and all that, that effort to go into nailing these boots together. But that's pretty much it. Everything else is almost identical on the inside. I really don't see hardly any differences at all between these boots. And there are, and there are a few other materials on the inside here. You can see between the insole and the other layers, a little bit of foam on the inside to help prevent squeaking of those, those layers rubbing together. And you can see there's no toe stiffener, so this is their, stop, their soft toe version, but you can get a steel toe version too for like 10 or 20 bucks more. So now that we have it cut in half, looking at the cross section of this boot, I think Tim at JK's uh, description of, or analogy best describes it because if the regular JK boots are quite literally the super, the Ford Super Duties, the King Ranch Super Duty versions, the, the 300s are kind of your F-150. They're still gonna do a lot of the things a Super Duty can do. It's still a truck, it's still made for work but it's not quite as beefy as the Super Duties because it doesn't have to be. It's for a different purpose. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit more flexible, a, a lower price point for those people who don't need a big old King Ranch Super Duty. And don't get me wrong, it's not like they're not a super heavy duty rugged boot because they're still significantly more sturdy and durable than any, any of the other Matusa boots that we've cut apart. Those other boots are more like, like a Subaru, like the, the Subaru with the truck bed or like a Ford Ranger. That's to continue with the car analogy. So speaking 
of the Matusa board. Let's see how this thing ranks. And just to remind you, the Matusa board is strictly off of quality of materials, not the value of the materials and the price and how that all compares. So it's a little bit unfair for brands that are not as close to that $400 ceiling. So right now at the top of the Matusa board is the Thursday Made in America Lager. That was $285. So comparing the, the JK300 to the Thursday, it has more leather and more leather is more better. It has a sturdier construction, thicker materials. So strictly from that quality standpoint, I think it's pretty fair to say this is the new number one on the Matusa board. Because these boots are just really impressive. It, it's kind of crazy they're able to bring this down to that price point, especially comparing it to their other boots at $200 more. And especially for how small the brand is, you know, this is basically the same price as, as the Wolverine Thousand Mile boot. And there is no comparing these boots. They're completely different standards of quality and they're way different materials. And it's just, it's crazy to me that a, such a small brand can make such a high quality boot for such a low price. And I, I honestly doubt they're making a ton of money on these boots because maybe what they're doing is a little bit of that loss leader business model. And if you don't know what a loss leader business model is, it's where they are selling a product or service at a price that is not profitable, but is sold to attract new customers to sell additional products and services to those customers. So I, that might be part of what they're doing. And that's really, really beneficial for the consumer because you're getting a boot at a price significantly lower than it should be priced at. I don't know for sure if that's what they're doing, but I just don't, I don't really know how they're making good money off of selling this boot for that price. So for you guys that have been wanting to get into a pair of Pacific Northwest boots that you've always wanted that really thick leather, you wanted to know the whole experience without paying $600, this is a really good way to do it because it's nearly identical to their $600 boots. You know, and it, and it doesn't quite have that same refined look, the finishing details, like, uh, you know, it's, it's a different looking boot, boot. It's definitely a work centered boot because that's what JK does. Everything they do is centered around work and durability and everything else about this boot takes a back seat to those two ideals. But if you disagree with me, I'd like to hear what specifically you think I got wrong about this because I'm, I'm pretty confident in this review and I'm pretty confident in putting that at the very top of the Matusa board, but I'm not above being wrong. So if I, there's something I missed, let me know. And if you own a pair of JK boots, let me know what your experiences are with them because it's a really great resource for people who haven't had a pair of JK boots. They can watch this video and they can go down to the comment section and read people's reviews of them. So thank you guys for everything you do and supporting these brands that support the channel because these dedicated sponsored reviews are really the lifeblood of the channel. And it's what allows us to do all the other reviews that you guys want to see so thank you guys so much for supporting these brands and supporting the channel it means a lot to me because i love doing this it's a it's kind of crazy that this is my job and i know i say at the end of every video thanks so much for your support but i really mean it it's it, we literally couldn't do it without your support so thank you guys see ya